So we will first see uh, basically and go through how to create a static map. So of course you have already seen and done quite a few static maps, but uh, I will basically show you a one useful uh, kind of feature or trick how to add basically base maps from different sources. So using OpenStreetMap as a base base map layer for your visualization or Carto DB DB uh, and, and these kind of other and also the well there are different uh, kind of map tile providers available uh, and then Walker will basically after the static maps part uh, introduce you a bit of how to uh, create interactive maps using uh, leaflet or this package volume that is a wrapper around leaflet uh, front-end uh, framework mapping framework and then the last part is to basically show you how you can actually put uh, the interactive maps online in a way that you can basically share them with your friends and show that uh, kind of uh, what you have have done because well sharing interactive maps or any interactive things is a uh, a bit tricky and and the best way of doing it is of course to share them uh, and distribute them via some url uh, where the visualization is running or the application that you're using and then we have the exercise uh, but yeah so basically I have already previously mentioned, but there are a lot of different packages available for uh, visualization and, and for producing maps. Matplotlib is again, and what you have mainly been using. So it is a good, good one for producing static maps and it's integrated into GeoPandas, but then there are these interactive ones. Uh, so Bokeh is something this we basically introduced last year uh, we will skip uh, this year this uh, package, but then there is this volume, uh, and then there is the MPL leaflet, which is nice because it can convert those matplotlib uh, visualizations that you have done. So basically, using for example geopandas.plot to create a map. So with this library, you can easily kind of make an interactive version of of that map. And then there is space map. Uh, not maybe that much used anymore um, but that's anyway something <coughs> uh, kind of uh, mapping library based on matplotlib and then there's this geo views which is good and actually one that is missing in here is the uh, geo plot which is another quite nice nice library for doing uh, different kind of visualizations such as cartograms and so on. There is a nice gallery in here. I will add this this to here. So how to create these kind of these kind of visualizations, for example. And actually still one more that is missing here is this dash uh, Python. This is not maybe that much it what dash does is that it basically produces already this kind of online applications uh, that you can use to let's see if we have some demo nice demo for example this one this is um, quite a nice package which basically allows you to do these kind of dashboards that are in interactive so for example you have a map map in here that, that you can zoom in and, and out and then you have a lot of different kind of information in inside these different views basically so they are kind of linked to each other and if you make a selection somewhere it should affect for example what you see see on the map so we can see that these are now selected in here and so on uh, this is quite nice uh, a bit more challenging uh, so kind of I recommend you to take a look at it but if it's maybe useful to learn a bit more about these easier 
uh, frameworks first when before going and diving deeper into the dash world good um, but let's start with the static maps part so again we have uh, binder ready uh, CSC notebook is missing still one package so I recommend here to use the binder I have uh, raised an issue so that uh, it should uh, become available to there as well but uh, we can start by using the binder where everything should be should be ready so we will first indeed dive a bit deeper into static maps so we have a data folder basically in here so we will use some some data that we have already seen before uh, and kind of play around uh, with that one with these ones and we will basically create some travel time maps and then see how we can add uh, some base map using map tiles from different sources uh, behind it so indeed so we have this kind of data available in the data folder so we have some of the addresses that we geocoded already was it during the second or no the third week then we have a shape file for uh, showing the metro line which is actually the metro line before the new uh, extension of the metro then we have some roads and some social media data and then this travel times to railway station and then also some population information uh, available but um, let's start by creating a first static map uh, using geopandas and then we will start seeing uh, how we can add those um, map tiles behind so first thing i will import geopandas as gbd then i will also import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt so these typical packages and then i will also call the magic matplotlib inline so that i can show some stuff on the notebook and as always first let's define few file paths so what i will now just do is to basically uh, use couple of different layers from this data folder that we have in here so I will basically use this travel times uh, to railway station data uh, then I will add the roads and the metro on top of each other so that's kind of the idea in here so I will call grid fp so grid file path equals to data slash travel times to well actually it's better again to copy the file path from here so that it will be correct so here by clicking the shape file and then um, copy path is the one that I can use to actually copy the full file path from there uh, and then I don't need these because these are a relative paths so data travel times to this number railway station dot shape is the first one then the roads file path is data slash roads dot shape then the metro fp is data slash metro dot shape so these three are the data sets that we will use and the next thing is that we will read those so read the files so let's read the travel time grid into variable called grid which equals to gbd dot read file and then we have roads it equals to gbd.read file and roads fp and then we have the metro which 
which is the same thing but for metro if p so let's now take a look of the head head of the grid to see what we have there there are again some warnings but you don't need to worry about those things they are not dangerous but as we can see so we have the travel time data in here which has some polygon information so it's a grid and then a lot of rifles in in here uh, good and then as always when basically starting to do visualization and putting multiple layers together so really the first thing to ensure is that all the layers have the same coordinate reference system so that we can put them nicely on top of each other so those values should of course match so let's basically use the coordinate reference system from the grid as the basis so the basis for the projection that we will use so let's get the crs from the grid grid layer so i will just create a variable called crs with capital uh, letters and I will pass the crit.crs in here and if we basically take a look what that is so we can see that okay it has this kind of defi definition in here having the EPSG 3067 which is the Eurofin projection uh, commonly used in Finland so that is the projection that we will use and then we will reproject uh, geometries of the other layers into EB, EBSG 3067 and we can basically say that roads so this is one of the layers that we read so roads equals to roads dot two CRS and this CRS is basically this CRS that we picked from this grid and this same thing we will do for this metro equals to metro dot two CRS and the same trick so now we have the same baseline for all of the projections in here and then we can take a look for example the metro CRS and now they should be similar we can take a look not maybe in here but i will make a new cell and take a look what kind of values do we have so metro.head so indeed we seem to have these kind of metric values in here and they should remind more or less what we have in the roads yes they look quite similar as well and the grid should be something something similar in here and they indeed are so this is always the first step uh, to check when doing visualization so ensure that the coordinate reference system matches so let's now create a plot uh, based on this so let's visualize the travel times so i will call x equals to grid dot plot so nothing new here we have seen how to do this many times uh, already so we can use the geodata frame and use the dot plot method or function to plot values from certain column so let's use this car uh, rush hour time so car underscore r underscore t so the values from that uh, column will be used uh, to as the colors in our uh, plot we can specify the line width to be zero so we don't want to have any uh, line lines next to our polygons and the color maps that we use let's use red Oops. so we have different kind of red 
nuances of red colors as our color scheme. Uh, and then we use the scheme as quantiles. So we kind of classify the values based on this quantiles classification method. We specify that the we use, let's say, five different uh, classes and let's say that the alpha so the transparency should be 0 0.9 meaning that there is 10 percent transparency uh, in the map so this is kind of the basic plot well we can take a look how does it look like there's some warnings coming from mm -hmm, and some error as well oh there was some it's not C maps, it's C map. <coughs> so, and indeed, as we can see, so this is what comes out. So, this kind of map. But let's add a couple of layers. So, let's add the roads on top. So, we can just call that x equals to roads dot plot and we can say that x equals to x so now we are basically adding these roads on top of this grid that we specified in here and we can specify the color of the roads to be uh, gray and then we can specify that the line width of those rows that we will be adding is 1.5 units uh, and that's it let's also add uh, metro on top so in a similar manner we can say that x equals to metro dot plot and now we need to specify that on top of what we want to put it so on top of this x so x equals to x and then we want to say that the color should be red and the line width should be 2.5 is this clear to you the uh, plotting things on top of each other and using this x equals to x parameter is it intuitive yeah Yeah, exactly. So what this first one does is here is that we basically use this grid plot is kind of the starting point for us. And then what this dot plot returns is to basically it returns the axis from the matplotlib. So if you remember that we have used this matplotlib dot subplots to create multiple plots uh, next to each other. So this is now just returning one of those axes or axis uh, and then we basically uh, always use this kind of to associate the information to that same x and here we are actually always kind of uh, saving the state into this variable in here and this is how we basically well we can take a look when we do this so we should get a map with a lot of typos in here. So metro dot plot. So now we should have this kind of map where we have the roads. These are the ring roads in Helsinki, and then we have the old metro line. So nowadays it's going into this direction, but this is what it used to be not so long ago. Yeah, but. This is kind of already a pretty decent map. So we have some uh, kind of color scheme going on and some classification in, our, in, in the map. And we have some context in here. So we, what we did was that we added some roads and one metro line in here 
Uh, what we could have added here is, for example, to add the railroad lines uh, and so on. But uh, it actually gets quite, uh, well, it doesn't take long before you actually have a really a lot of layers that you want to put next to uh, on top of each other uh, and that might be it might be something that you want to use uh, but quite often it is useful to actually use something ready-made uh, for example using using this kind of visualization coming from uh, OpenStreetMap where they use a lot of effort to actually uh, draw these kind of useful um, and nice looking maps that you can actually use. So indeed the next thing what we will do is that we will see how to use this information from these map providers such as OpenStreetMap and how to use this layout and plot something on top of this so that you have the context uh, of the well the geography and different kind of uh, features such as the uh, land use, the water areas uh, and the well some of the names of the places and so on which are really useful so people who are looking at your map they understand actually where something is happening. Did you yeah. have some questions? Um, no. No. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's a good question actually. So basically we could also do this without the column. So by default uh, you can plot anything uh, and it will basically just use some uh, color for the whole map. So if we will do this without this column actually, uh, what will come out, I don't now know what is the well, it will most probably be some, yeah. Uh, it uses some red color because, well, now we have the reds in here. If we also remove this one and also this one. So now what we should have is just to have a grid plotted with some color. Well, it comes by default as color blue. Uh, but indeed, the uh, column variable which is this that we use to specify that visualize the car travel times so this is an optional value but of course quite often if you're creating maps you most probably want to have you, you are visualizing some information and the information uh, that you visualize is coming from this uh, column in here and then you specify all these other ones so what kind of color map you use and what kind of classification scheme and so on but indeed it's not necessary so in this case with this variable color we can basically specify that the uh, the whole data should be colored with gray gray color uh, and this other one the whole data that you have should be colored with red so that's that's how it works good um, any any other questions at this point Good. So uh, what we will do now is that we will indeed use the OpenStreetMap uh, data to as a, as a background map. So there are a lot of different ready-made map tile providers. So OpenStreetMap is one. The Stamen Design uh, is another one. So the these are basically this is a I think they are a, a company basically providing uh, different uh, different map tiles that can be used and different styles that can be used as a background for your there is for example this kind of I don't know in what situation you would like to use this uh, but there's this kind of burning map uh, yeah kind of an apocalyptic <laughs> feeling uh, in this but but anyway so this is actually the data is coming from uh, I believe in this one also from OpenStreetMap and then they have this cool way of visualizing that um, yeah I don't know any at least the visualizations that I do I don't know what 
would be that kind of visualization that I would like to use this style. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, possible and there are a lot of different things. Maybe the useful ones is this uh, toner that looks quite nice. So it has this kind of uh, black, black and white uh, appearance, uh, which which is fairly nice. Uh, the other commonly used from this stamen uh, design is this uh, terrain that looks, it has kind of nice hill shades, for example, in here. And then the if we zoom in, you get uh, the names of the rows and so on as well, uh, with certain limits. So when you zoom, zoom in closer, you will actually see a different uh, kind of styles and you get some of the road names and, and so on. So this uh, stamen and the open street map uh, are the ones that we will uh, first take a look at how we can do that. And there is a really nice package called Contextily uh, that is that can be used to add base maps uh, on the background of your visualizations. So we will use this package uh, to to do do and add uh, some of the background information on top of this uh, grid that we have in here. The really um, kind of important information re regarding using these uh, tile providers is that basically most of the tile providers they provide the data in certain projection and it is this web, web mercator so for example Google uh, I think they are still using the same same projection but before doing the visualization we need to ensure that the data that we have should be reprojected into this one so using this EPSG 3857 uh, code. So first what we will do is that we will reproject the data. So I will now kind of start from the beginning. So I will import all the packages and so on so that uh, you will see what is needed. So geopendas is GBD, then we have the matplotlib. You don't need to necessarily import these again, but you can. And then the contextily is indeed the package that we will use. This is commonly uh, shortened as CTX. Uh, so import contextily as CTX and we will use the matplotlib inline magic again. So what we will do is that I will, well the file path will be the same grid that we read in. So I will just copy paste this from here and read it in in here. So we have the grid at P, then I will read the data. So I will call it grid equals to GBD read file grid FP and then indeed uh, what we need to do is that we need to reproject that data so reproject to EPSG 3857 so we can create a variable called data equals to grid dot 2 CRS and the EPSG code uh, that we will use should be that uh, 3857 and let's take a look at the CRS and the head of the data so that we can see what happens uh -huh. I have a Now, so now we can see that the definition looks like this. So we have the EPSG 
3857 the geometry seem to be some metric system so we have large numbers meters from from somewhere and that's the definition that we have so now let's use basically the we the kind of the steps that are needed to produce the map with base map is that first of all you create the map using the geopandas in a similar way as you would uh, in any uh, in any other cases uh, but using the uh, data in this specific projection in here so web mercator and then we will add a base map on top of that uh, or not on top but underneath the the map that you have produced so the first step is that we will plot the data so in a similar manner as before but now indeed using the data in this this uh, projection uh, so we stored that into this data variable so here we reprojected it so data.plot and the column that we want to plot is the public transport rush hour travel times let's use a color map again so that we can have some uh, nice nice visualization coming out so let's use red yellow blue so r d y l b u uh, letters as the color map and the line width can be zero and the scheme can be again quantiles and uh, the number of classes should be let's put nine classes and the alpha so let's put now more alpha because we want to actually have something visible coming from the background map as well so let's put it let's put it like 50% so alpha equals to 0 0.5 so these are the parameters for our plot and can you still see this from the background hopefully uh, and now what we will do is that we will add the base map and <coughs> now we will use this axis uh, basically coming from this plot uh, command and we will use the CTX so this is the contextually uh, package that we imported in here so we will use that package and there is a, a function called CTX dot add base map and basically what this wants as an input is to have the axis on into which axis the base map should be uh, inserted so this is all we need and basically now we wait a, wait a bit and see what comes out so now basically what we can see here is that we have the map with the travel times to the city center but then we have this background map uh, as well so we can see that the data that we had was nicely plotted on top of this base map so this is something that you do in QGIS ArcGIS all the time when you want to take a look of your data so it is as easy as this basically uh, plotting something with the base map in the background uh, but let's see so this is now by default the background map that the CTX or the contextually package will use is from this time and uh, design this terrain uh, style but let's see basically first of all what kind of different styles they are available so we can use there is the ctx dot tile providers 
So from here, if we put dot and press um, tabulator, we can get a list of different different uh, providers that are available and the different styles. If we want to print out all of these things, we can use a function called dir, which basically produces a list of all of these. So these ones are basically uh, instantly available out from the box uh, when using this contextually at the moment. So we have these OSM A, B, C, uh, and these are not actually, they don't mean that they are different uh, styles from OpenStreetMap. They are just meaning that they are actually, OpenStreetMap have, has three different servers that they use to distribute because there are, of course, hundreds of thousands of users probably using those uh, background maps. So they have different servers that can be used used as a back end for fetching those. Uh, so OpenStreetMap is one. Uh, then there is this uh, stamen design. So the ones that we checked earlier, uh, for example, this one. But basically these terrain, watercolor, uh, and so on, they are available. So we have the stamen terrain with background, with only with labels, lines, and then the toner and so on, and the watercolor. So actually the, the burning map is not by default in here, but I'm sure it can be used as well. Cool, uh, but let's see how we can now use the um, OpenStreetMap as the tile provider. So what we will use is that we will use this OSM A uh, as the background map server. So how this works is that we will indeed plot the data in a similar manner as before. So what I will now do is that I will just go back in here. I will just copy and paste this line of code from here and put it in here and then what I will do is that I will add the base map with st toner style. No, not st toner, but the OpenStreetMap OSM A style. That was the idea. Uh, so we will again use the ctx dot add base map and we will add it to the X but then there is this uh, if we take a look of the documentation so there is X then there is a parameter called zoom that basically uh, defines what how many details are coming from the uh, map uh, provider uh, then there is the URL and this is the one that we actually need to update in here. So by default, it is coming from the stamen terrain uh, server, but we will use URL equals to, and what we pass in here is basically from the CTX and the tile providers. And from here, we can specify that use this OSMA. Oops. So in this way, we can just quickly pass in the URL in a way how this contextually package wants to have the date. So let's see what happens when we, when we do this. Again, it takes some time. So what happens in the background is that uh, it will first plot the data and then the CTX will actually download the raster. So the PNG image from uh, the server of OpenStreetMap in this case, and then it will visualize it uh, in the background. And now we can see that we have the OpenStreetMap uh, tiles in here. And it looks a bit different than this one. Quite similar, but if we take a look, for example, the green color in here, 
and the green color in here, there are some variation. But of course, uh, the uh, um, statement design data is based on OpenStreetMap data as well. Uh, they just make the design a bit differently, but anyway, the kind of how the data looks like should be quite similar. Now, as we can see, uh, there is this uh, contribution or attribution information in here, which is mapped to us by statement design under CC by BY 3.0. So as we can see in this case, we are not using the map task anymore by statement design. So this information is actually incorrect in here. So what we can do is that we can indeed update that information. So using this attribution uh, uh, parameter in here, we can specify it to be something else. So we can say that attribution equals to something like uh, map tiles by open street map and we can say that the they are under license cc by 4.0 and these are whenever using this information so you can use it as well in any situations more or less uh, but there is this uh, so the license is this uh, creative commons uh, bi 4.0 or it's actually 3.0 if i remember right uh, but that kind of requires that you should have this text associated with with any maps so for example here we have this copyright open street map con contributors in here uh, on this open street map that we we have on this website so with this attribution uh, parameter you can basically uh, modify that information that will be shown like this in here good so let's continue uh, let's make a look uh, so as we can see here uh, the map is so large that basically the details the level of details that we have actually on this map is not that much so let's take a small su subset from our data so that we can actually only get the city center area for the Helsinki region and then we play around with that data a bit so take only grid cells uh, with travel times between 0 and 10 so I will create a subset and I will take that subset from the data and I will use the data.lock to do the selection so as we can see in here we want to have travel times that are basically equal or larger than zero but less or equal to 10 minutes so we need to have two criteria in our selection and the first selection is that the data and we will use the uh, public transportation travel time so PTRT should be larger or equal to zero so this is the first criteria for our selection and the other criteria is that the data uh, BTRT should be less or equal to 10. So this is the subset that we will do. And let's add, let's make a plot and see what happens. So plot the subset data. So x equals to subset dot plot the column equals to btrt uh, let's put line width equals to zero and alpha equals to 0 0.5 so we are good with this one and then let's add again 
base map with OSM A uh, style. So again, we use the CTX dot add base map, and the axis that we will use is the one that we did in here, and the URL will be the CTX dot tile providers uh, and the OSMA will be the one. So this is what is needed to make a new map with a sub selection or subset of the data. And let's see what comes out. So now we can see that this is what we have. And as you can see, so what this automatically does is that it will kind of now fetch more detailed background map from OpenStreetMap. So compared to the earlier one, uh, meaning this, uh, we don't have much any kind of uh, details about the roads. We have the largest ones and so on. But when looking at this one, so what this CTX does is that it automatically defines the zoom level for you so that we have, for example, in here, it doesn't show up too, too well, but we can see, for example, some of the uh, kind of outlines or footprints of buildings even here. We can see the rail, rail uh, railroad uh, coming from the city center and so on. And if we would zoom even more, we would actually have uh, kind of street names and so on. So basically CTX does that automatically. So indeed it has the uh, zoom level auto, which is basically uh, defined in a way that the contextually package uh, checks your data and defines the zoom level automatically. But that's not necessary to uh, use that zoom level so we can adjust the zoom level ourselves. So let's see uh, how we can do that and reduce the level of detail from from this map that we did. So what I will do again is that I will just copy paste this line from here because we are using the same same map and we will make a plot and then let's add base map with OSM A using zoom level of 11. So what these zoom levels are, so there is a link in here that you can take a look. So uh, all of the map uh, tile providers, they basically, well, I guess most of them follow more or less this criteria that OpenStreetMap has, but basically it can be different. Uh, but the idea is that they have uh, different levels of detail. So for example, level zero is basically uh, such um, zoom level where you can represent the whole world. And then the larger the number or the level zoom level gets, the more actually detailed information you have. And we can basically adjust ourselves what the zoom level should be. Uh, I kind of, the automatic one is, is good to use. There might be coming issues if you, for example, use the most detailed level information and for example, try to do a map covering the whole world because then it, what it does, it tries to fetch the whole or every single small tile covering the whole world and basically produce a map uh, based on those tiles. And yeah, most probably it would take forever and in the end doesn't work because your computer runs out of memory. So the automatic one is is good one. But anyway, I will still show you how we can because there might be situations where you might want to adjust the level of detail a, a little bit. So we will use the add base map 
and we will again use the x and we will use the uh, parameter zoom to specify that the zoom level should be in this case 11 and what does this 11 mean in this case is that we should have uh, this kind of uh, for example the level of detail uh, meter per pixel is around 76 meters so one pixel kind of has information uh, covering or some high scaled to this level of detail and the example of areas to represent is for example city so let's see what comes out when we use this and the map provider will be the ctx dot tile providers dot osm a so now what we can see is that we have a map uh, we have the same data but much uh, kind of less details so this is what we we get from here uh, and as you can see now the extent of the map was actually automatically uh, kind of taken further away from our data and this might be a problem uh, but there is a way how we can basically crop uh, crop this image uh, so that we will actually show a similar uh, extent than we what we have in here so we can specify and crop the image with this uh, set x limb and set y limb so what we can do is that i will just demonstrate how to do that so we will take this as a starting point so we will do the same thing so i just copy and paste this to here and then i will specify the uh, the x and y axis limit so crop the figure so we can use the x and say that x dot set x limits so x lim and the values that we will pass here so they are basically we can read from these x and y axis the minimum x which should be something around here so 277 uh, zero, 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 and the maximum would be something 278 and blah 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 and the minimum y should be something like this and the maximum in here so basically I can put 277 uh, and four zeros one two three four so this is the minimum x and the maximum x is 2785 and three zeros one two three and the same thing for the uh, y limit so set y limb and then here we can say eight three four five and three zeros like this and the maximum will be eight four four two five and two zeros so these are the this is the minimum x and maximum x minimum y and maximum y coordinate and again where did i actually get these numbers is that i take a look of these numbers in here and specify the minimum and maximum ones so when i do this what happens is that we have this kind of map coming out uh, as we can see this uh, attribution text somehow comes a bit awkwardly in here so I can say that the attribution equals to uh, empty string and when I do this we will only have this data in here uh, if you want to do the xlim ylim it might be useful if you just copy and paste those numbers from the uh, lesson materials so that they go correctly but this is basically what should come out so now we are back kind of crop the image and as we can see the level of details is not uh, we have less details so we have kind of different looking map from 
from the previous one and so on. Uh, so this is how you can crop stuff uh, and also adjust some of the different different parameters from from the map or for the map. So indeed now we have seen uh, actually what we could take a look at is that I will now make uh, another one. Mm, I will remove remove this one from here. No, I will make a copy of this. So I will just copy and create a new cell below here and paste these ones here. But let's take a look of one of the uh, the other what kind of other tiles we have. So ctx.tileproviders. So let's take a look for example uh, what this watercolor looks like. So if I I just change the last parameter from here and I remove the zoom uh, or we can specify zoom equals to auto so it will automatically detect the correct zoom level. So let's see what this watercolor looks like when we do this. So now we can see that the background map looks like some kid would have drawn something with the color, watercolors. And this might be nice in some, some occasions. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other ones. Let's take the toner background. So what we should have in here is that now we have this kind of black background coming in here without any any labels. So if we use ST toner only, we should have also some labels uh, coming to our map. So they are kind of, well, not that much, but it should have. But anyway, you can play around with different styles that, that the comes out, out from the box from this context delete package. So we have the uh, Stamen design and the open street map as the possible ones. But of course, there are many different uh, tile providers, and there is a link in here for different tile providers that are available, and there is a long list of those in here. And basically, all of these can be used. Um, so let's see how we can. For example, use so for example, S3 background maps are here available. But what I'm interested in is this Carto DP uh, background map. So when clicking this, we can actually get the map and how it looks like uh, when you zoom in and out. So this is what we have in here. Let's go to Helsinki so that we can see it's kind of a nice looking neutral neutral uh, map design so this is basically what we should have but this doesn't come directly out from the box with the context delay, at least at the moment I'm sure they will be they will add at this probably later but there is information uh, so how you can do that and there is a link to here so <coughs> basically how these uh, data providers what they want as an input uh, so that they kind of well what kind of parameters are needed to fetch the data from the server and basically put it uh, below your visualization is that they want to have a URL, URL call with these specific uh, information in here. And this is now for Cartodb, so Cartodb 
uh, and this is the ones that we should spe specify so we need to specify the style which can be one of these ones so light all dark all and or then this raster tiles voyager and different kind of styles and then it needs to have the zoom level it needs to have the x um, tile coordinates for for the background map and then well this is optional the scale so uh, how much uh, resolution um, should be with those uh, tiles coming but we can basically use this kind of uh, URL uh, to fetch the data and this works in a similar manner for all of these different uh, different map tile providers more or less we only need to adjust the URL for for this so let's see how we can how we can do that so actually in the uh, notebook we have the basic so I prepared this a bit ready uh, for you so this is kind of what we need to follow so this is the template so we need to specify the uh, style or the well this is not the style this is the kind of server source which is basically uh, as is mentioned in here uh, it is one of the available subdomains a b c or d so in our case we just specify that to be a so a dot basemap.cartocdn.com and then we need to specify the style and the styles are indeed coming from these available values so what we will be using here is to use the style raster tiles voyager so this is kind of the design and style of the map that will be used and then it requires to have the zoom level x and y positions and these are specified in this manner when using this contextually so we have the tile zoom level tile x uh, kind of boundary or not boundary but the uh, kind of limit and the tile uh, y coordinate for uh, fetching the, the data so this is more or less ready uh, in here so now we can just do the same trick so we plot the data from subset so we can call x equals to subset dot plot uh, and the column equals to ptrt and we can say that line width equals to zero and the alpha equals to 0 0.5 so that's enough for us to make a, the basic visualization and then what we need to pass in to uh, to contextually package is to use this URL that comes from here so we can uh, use carto db background map <coughs> So it works in a similar manner. So cdx dot add base map, and then the axis equals well the axis that we will use is this one. Uh, let's use zoom level 14, and the let's say that attribution equals to nothing at this point, and the URL that we will pass is now this URL that we are parsing from here so it is this carto db url and this should be enough for what is uh, non-property line line width like this so now what we can see that we changed the background uh, map tile provider from this uh, from the earlier ones to this uh, custom custom one 
which is the cartodb. So we can now take a look what this cartodb URL looks like. So this is this is the call that we use. So the basemaps.cartocdn.com and then we have the style in here and then the tile set, tile x and tile y. So what these are what kind of happens in the background is that this uh, contextually package will basically specify those values for you based on the extent of your map. So you don't need to kind of worry about that. The contextually package is doing that for you and specify that, okay, the left, uh, lower left boundary or the position for the raster is something and the upper right is something that so that's how it works and it's really easy now to change this and see for example what this dark all looks like so we can just change this to dark all do the same tricks and what comes out is something that looks like this so now we have uh, this kind of a darker background map and here we can see they are not uh, large but there are some labels in here as well if we make this zoom level a bit smaller maybe 13 maybe the text come out a bit larger so yes now we can see a bit bit more but maybe even 12 would be good in this case so now we can get some idea of actually what these are, so here is Katajanokka, Kulosaari, Alppiharju and the other locations uh, and the labels for these places. So this is basically a kind of introduction to like how to use different kind of base maps uh, in, in Python uh, associated with your with your own visualization. So all of these things you can like whenever you are doing any visualization of your own you can use this to produce uh, nice looking static maps with background information and the kind of map tiles from from different sources and indeed uh, I recommend you to kind of find a suitable one for example taking a look at these these uh, this listing in here uh, and how to fetch those. So basically you, you can in a similar manner fetch all of these ones or more, more or less. There is for example this looks like the there is some information about is it something related to biking? Hike bike mm, most probably uh, and so on. There is also some NASA figures which are quite nice. There is, for example, Modisterra from here. Let's see how it looks like. Can we use it? Okay. Doesn't look too well. How about this one? Well, at least this works. So, for example, we can get a satellite satellite ima imagery uh, as a background map as well which looks something like this good uh, do you have any questions about this part